Hello, welcome to episode 4, Nintendo November. Today I'm just going to focus on Super Mario Bros. 3, which I think is the best one. And this one's a lot longer than the other Mario games, so I'll, the whole stream will just be this, and I'm going to try to just play every level. I have streamed it before, but yeah, it was a long time ago, and I don't think I saved the video anyway. Get right into it, why not? So my goal is to beat every level and no whistles. shouldn't be um, I shouldn't be getting a game over but you also I think you get infinite continues as well so it won't be like the other streams where I couldn't even do it this is a game I'm very familiar with so it seems like if you run at top speed and just jump at the right time, yeah, you can definitely, um, get the star. I could have gone down that tunnel, but I thought, let's just grab the one up. Otherwise, this stream is going to take a lot longer if I die. I can't get the star every time, but it's, I, I would say I'm pretty consistent. get it, but not always. And just like my last stream, this is being played on the NES mini console, also called the NES Classic Edition, which has been hacked, and I added a whole bunch of games, but this was one of the built-in titles anyway, so it runs great on the built-in emulator, and with the Controller. Yeah, and if you can somehow get all the coins in this level, then you do unlock a hidden level.
So there's plenty of secrets in this game that I know about, but I can't always pull it off. Yeah. I think you have to be at top speed before you get into the black area. And then you gotta jump, like, almost underneath it. Dang it! Yeah, th this is just one of the best games ever made, hands down. No contest. I only wish that there was some kind of update to get rid of, you know, the flickering on the side of the screen there. But it's not, like, game-breaking or anything. It's just... But it's one of those things where it's like, really, you, you couldn't fix that? You know, Nintendo's all about preserving the original experience. It's like, yeah, but... You really should leverage new hardware to at least fix frame drops and other visual glitches and whatnot. Artifacts. Yeah, in the Kawabunga collection, they were able to get rid of sprite, uh, sprite flickering and um, frame rate drops in the er early Turtles games, and it's, so we know it's possible, and I just wish Nintendo would do something like that. Of course, what's great about the mini consoles is that at least they run off of HDMI and they are 720p. Controller replicas they come with are pretty damn close to the originals in my opinion. Oh, you know what? I didn't know about this until like a year ago. <laughs> yeah, but you could fly up there because it, it gives you no indication until you're actually in the air. Yeah, Sonic Origins, um, overall I like it, it's a good collection, but, um, I mean, it, it, to me it's, it's, 
a good version to play, obviously, on PS5 and Series X. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying, though. There, It did seem like sometimes the physics felt a little off. There was parts where I was getting crushed to death in ways that I don't remember happening to me before. And then when they upgraded to the widescreen format, they actually extended the view distance to the left and right, which changes the game a little bit. You can see further ahead, but it's also just kind of jarring if you're not used to it. But I did get the Platinum Trophy, which was fun. I really think Sonic Origins, though, should have just included the other ones, too. Like, you know, so it was Sonic 1, 2, 3 and CD and Knuckles. I really think they should have just done um, maybe some of the Game Gear or Master System, Sonic 3D Blast, Sonic Spinball, you know, those would have been nice little bonuses to unlock, especially for the $40 price tag. That's just my opinion, though. <laughs> the wizard, uh... Yeah, the wizard is the reason we knew about the, uh, whistles and stuff. Honestly, that was the only thing I liked about the wizard, was just the part where they're at the contest. The rest of the movie is terrible. <laughs> California. Power Glove, it's so bad. Uh, yeah, Power Glove is fucking terrible. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. I get stuck down here. I was trying to get into there, but I can't. Okay. That's, oh. Alright, I have one here. And not get hit by this douchebag. Oh, well. Yeah, look. Alright, let's. Mario and Zelda 2, first game in the world. Um, yeah, I was uh, four years old. I got the NES as a Christmas gift, and it was the one that came with the two controllers and the zapper and the Mario Duck Hunt dual cartridge. And then my mom also got me a copy, or, or Santa Claus <laughs> got me a copy of... Adventure Island. And I never beat that game because it's so damn long and it's so damn hard. There's another level where if you can get every coin, there's a bonus afterwards. But it means you've got to get one of those key blocks that I already missed. And then all of these blocks turn into coins, and you gotta collect them all. And of course, if you want to go back to try to get it again, then you gotta deal with these goddamn fish. Yeah, I played a lot of NES games as a kid, but I was a teenager when I was finally able to beat Metroid and Zelda 2. Oh, I can't get it now, unless I... I don't know why I'm even trying to do this right now. Alright, screw it. 
Or you know what, I'll just die on purpose. We'll see if I can do that. And then, one day when I was a kid, my mom took me to the mall, to the game store, and said you can pick out any game you want. And I picked out DuckTales. Even though I'd already played it a bajillion times and beaten it, it was like my favorite game and I'm like, I got it. I gotta get DuckTales. See that? I gotta grab that and get all the coins, which is of course a pain in the ass. Look it up on YouTube. If you can somehow get all these coins, you unlock a bonus level. And then I had a close friend growing up, and he had Contra. And we used to just play Contra constantly. I used to go to his house like almost every Friday night. We'd watch TGIF, you know, Family Matters, all those shows. Um... And we played Contra. And that's why I started with Contra this month. Now when I got the Sega Genesis, it was the Genesis 2 system that came with Sonic 2. That was a good Christmas, too, so I was eight when I got that. And then I also had the Saturn as a kid, but ended up getting the N64, too, because Saturn had gotten discontinued and there were no games to play. Now watch, this, this ghost, you can get that ghost to follow you up here. Not that you want to, but... Oh, I didn't know I could go back down. <laughs> wow. Yeah, see this guy? This guy will chase you up there. You're not actually transitioning to a new area. That there is. <laughs> yeah. You're not, it's not actually an area transition. You're just going up the pipe. But see, this is a whole different area, though. You're, you're in a separate room now. Of course, what I like most about this game, I'd say, is just the controls were much more responsive than the first two games. Or first three, depending on which one you're counting. Like the Lost Levels versus the uh, Mario 2 that we got, Doki Doki Panic, etc. Oh, did you read the Console Wars book that came out years ago? That, that was good, and then they actually made a movie out of it, too. Really interesting stuff. Ah. The thing I find annoying is that it looks like the frame rate is lower on the stream than it is on my TV. Maybe it's because the TV has variable refresh rate, under 20 hertz and all that cool stuff. Dang it. I gotta say though, I've watched all the trailers for, um, whatchamacallit, um, 
Sonic Frontiers, and I think it looks good. It looks like Sega's answer to Mario Odyssey. Yeah, see, I'm the opposite, though. I, I want smoothing, I want noise reduction. You know, I want HDMI. I haven't used any power-ups yet, either. You know, I guess, I don't know. Not to brag, but I don't think I need them that much, at least not right now. I would have liked to go up there, though, with the leaf. Oh, well. Actually, that's a little odd, isn't it? A leaf turns him into a raccoon, and raccoons can fly now. It's just weird. doesn't make you raccoon, so the programming still expects you to be big Mario. Okay, got it. Yeah, I'm using OBS Studio. Um, my processor is the Ryzen 7 5800X. So right now, I mean, I think I'm getting decent quality and I'm only using about 27% CPU right now. Which is good. And it's all just air cooling. I got a bunch of fans. graphics card excellent yeah I've got a 6600 XT um, so I'm also on another uh, series I'm, I we do Sunday night shenanigans on ask wheels channel and he also does Q&A quests it's called and we talk about stuff like this all the time but just um, the other night we were talking about the new graphics card and stuff how the 4090 requires like a full tower case and a thousand watt power supply. And I was really hoping AMD would come out with a good mid-range option, but now their 7900 XT is still 900 bucks. But they're saying it only needs a 750 watt power supply though. So I might wait and see if they put out like a 
7800 XT or something like that. I think that would be a good up upgrade for me. Of course, I would switch to NVIDIA if the prices were a little more reasonable. But... Yeah, that was the other thing, the uh, fire. Yeah, so who is the... Uh... But it's like, who is the target market at this point? You know, who can even afford this shit right now? And then Intel is finally in the GPU game. I mean, yeah, they've got the mid-range option. Their A770 is the equivalent to a 3060 Ti. It's under 400 if you can find one not on eBay. Ah. I always forget where things are. I'm not good at the memory game. Yeah, same here. I, I play the... Um... Oh, that's a good price. Yeah, totally. And, um... Yeah, I use the computer mostly at this point for Twitch streaming, for music recording. Sometimes I do some writing. Sometimes I do a little video editing, but then, uh, yeah, I have the PS5 and the Series X, and I have the Switch OLED, so. But I ended up selling all my retro consoles, though. I had a friend who bought my Wii U and my Vita, and then he helped me sell the other ones to a used game store. So that was good. So yeah, I got rid of the Wii U, the Vita, the PS3, the Wii. And then I just have the mini consoles to play retro games, or I just play them in Retro Arc on PC. And then my Chromebook can do some emulation, not always well though. Dreamcast, I think in 2012 or 2013, just to play a handful of games, and I I didn't like it that much. I tried to play Shenmue, and I just didn't like it. And then I played Skies of Arcadia until I found out that there was a better version on GameCube, and now I play that on Dolphin sometimes. Gotta beat every level, so that was my goal. Plus, you want to go here to get the frog suit. I want to say all three of them have a frog suit. Yeah. And then I said I wasn't gonna get the whistles, but I also said I was gonna beat every level, so. Yeah, and those fire shooting hammer bros are very rare in this game. There aren't that many of them. So. Right. Yeah, Shenmue, I spent 90 minutes wandering around talking to NPCs, listening to bad voice acting and worthless advice. <laughs> I still didn't know what the fuck I was supposed to do. Now, I've explained this before, probably, and most people know this, but if you can beat these airship levels with certain suits on, then you get different messages from the king afterwards. So if you can beat it as the raccoon, um, the frog, or tanuki, you get a special message. I'm not sure about the uh, hammer bros suit, though.
think. And tonight I already ate dinner, so I should be able to keep streaming for a while. Those guys kind of look like Hans Mole Man, don't they? <laughs> I don't know which one, but one of the airship levels I thought had a hidden block after the final. Oh yeah, look at this fatty. <laughs> yeah, I saw some of your uh, YouTube videos and stuff. Oh, that's right. Now I gotta go chase the airship over here. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I want to save the frog suit for World 3, of course. I took a C-sharp course when I studied game design, and I, and then I also took, I did C++ and C-sharp, and that's when I learned that I don't like programming, and I'm not very good at it. some programming assignments and it's like you know it takes like you know 10 minutes to write the code and then 10 hours to debug it and find out why it won't compile or why it won't run the way you expect it to yeah so normally he says oh thank heaven blah 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 but then sometimes he says oh hello raccoon man what up Oh, can I borrow your magic suit? No dice? Dang. Yeah, I wanted to learn, um, the new... What I thought? I do have the newest version of Unreal Engine. I always wanted to learn that, but I just... A, a lot of the art assets are just really expensive on this door. Which is fine, I mean, artists have the right to charge whatever they want, but... I prefer programs that just have built-in assets to work with, like, art, you know, RPG Maker. And then I did learn some, um... Game Maker... But you have to get your own assets for that. Actually, maybe there's something I could show people one day. It's the, um, I worked on a class project, it was a group project, and we did a top-down Zelda-type game, but it was sci-fi and you had a gun. And I programmed, like, well, I designed, like, half the levels and wrote all the music for it, and then I had to... But then, it, in like the week before it was due, the other group members just kind of disappeared, and I got stuck basically playtesting it myself. And uh, yeah, I got pissed. Yeah, game design is hard. It's, it's not like playing games at all. And then it's hard to tell, like, if your game is 
difficult or too difficult or what because if after you've play tested it a hundred times you can beat it in five minutes. Well, actually, here, there was something in the news I read today. Um, some of the testers from Vicarious Visions, which got absorbed into Activision, um, some of the QA testers in Albany are trying to unionize, which is good. So if I wanted to, I could definitely, um, I could probably design just some really basic platformers and shoot 'em ups and stuff, based on what I learned in school. But um, I don't know. Doing anything more extensive than that just requires a whole team and I don't have the money. <laughs> Problem with capitalism is that you need capital if you want to rent out an office space and hire people and all that. So. That's why I was doing video game journalism for a little while with RP Gamer, and that's why I'm trying to do Twitch streaming now, and YouTube, and I still have some music projects I work on sometimes. Like, I was doing a cover of Something in the Way by Nirvana, but I never finished it, though. <laughs> Flappy Bird, oh god. I didn't know EA had an office in Florida. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, I almost got a job with um, EA Mythic. Yeah, ba back when we uh, worked together, me and Visual Knight, um, at one point, yeah, EA was hiring for um, customer service jobs for... Warhammer Online, which ended up failing, and then Mythic got axed, and everybody who moved down there lost their jobs, and that was in uh, Virginia, Fairfax. So I went down there for the interview, but then I ultimately decided not to move, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I made that choice. Yeah, I knew three guys who moved down to Virginia to work for EA, and they got laid off like six months later, I think. The giant fish's name is Bertha, and yes, she's killable. And yes, she can still swallow you when you're big. Yeah, the thing is, there aren't too many, um... Well, at the, at the time that I was looking for work when I got my game design degree, um, it's just there were no jobs like that in Connecticut at all. The school was trying to get me into another tech support or customer service job, and I'm like, that's not why I went back to school. Uh, door number six. Yeah, that's something I heard about. Um, there are some places where, yeah, you need, like, certain security clearances to pretty much work anywhere. Oh, yeah, I didn't know your dad died. Sorry about that. Um, or maybe I saw it on Facebook or something. Yeah, well, at least you're close to your mom. That's good. Yeah, I have, uh, my mom and my stepdad still live right across town, and my father lives in Texas, and I actually lived in Texas for a few months. I was staying with him, and it's, he lived in a nice area, um, but ultimately I'm like, I don't want to move down here. Like, I got to skip a whole New England winter, which was great, but I'm like, I don't want to move away from everyone. But then he still had a house up here, and he just sold it last year, so he's definitely not moving back anytime soon, if at all. So. 
But he still comes up for holidays. Oh, I'd love to get out of Connecticut, but this is where like my whole family is, so. Yeah, if I were to move, it would probably be Virginia because my sister and brother-in-law and my two nieces live there now. But then I have no plans of moving. I mean, I, I, this, this apartment that I live in is just so cheap. Actually, I was looking at other apartments, and the one I was looking at was just really expensive, and they only had two bedroom units available with with a roommate, and it's like, oh, I don't, I don't want that. And they were in the process of building more one bedrooms, but they told me that it would be five years before those became available. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's really tough to find any kind of housing right now. The whole real estate market just fucking sucks. Alright, got it that time. Alright. You gotta time it just right and jump before it starts flying up in the air. Oh, nice. Alright. Oh, cool. Alright, that's flower. No. There's flower, okay. And is this mushroom? Yes. Okay, cool. I'll hopefully get it by the end of the game. Yeah, you know, I don't even care. I'm just gonna mash the button until it's over. Yeah! I imagine, uh, hurricane insurance in Florida would be tough to get. Eh. Yeah, I want to say in uh, in my town there was a. I know there was a massive flood like back in the 50s, and I want to say that since then, the uh, renters insurance and stuff doesn't cover flood because they are too afraid there's actually going to be one. That's the scam of insurance. They never cover stuff you actually need them to cover. So you can see how as the further I get into the game, the more secrets I forget about. Because I there's a lot of levels in this game I just haven't played that many times. right now I only pay like 20 or 25 a month but I'm not sure exactly what it covers I think it really mainly covers like a, a break-in or if a tree falls on the apartment building but I don't know if it actually covers flooding or I would hope it would cover fires but who knows Oh, I should have got the frogs here. Oh well. So, so far I only used one power up and it was just because I wanted to try and get that special message at the end of the airship level, but of course I fudged it at the last second as you saw. Oh, and if you go on YouTube, you can... On, on my channel on YouTube, you can find a video of my friend Mike, aka Ask Wheels, he came over one day and I made some really nasty um, Mario Maker 2 levels and I made him play and yeah, so check that out. Ask Wheels plays my Mario Maker levels.
Nah, I don't need it, but... Points are good, right? I have 363,580 points. Great. Alright, how the hell do I get up there? I don't remember. Yeah, I think in this level, if you use the, uh... I always call it the P-Wing. It's the thing that lets you just fly all the time. I think that's what you need to get up there. Unless I'm missing something here. Unless there's a funnel I can use. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, no, the water levels are the are the worst. Honestly, has have, have water levels ever been good in, in any Mario game? No. I mean, the ones in Mario 64 were terrible. I hated the swimming in that game. But it was cool how you could just get your oxygen back to replenish your health. making pretty good progress so far. I think I might play till 1030. Oh, we gotta change the clocks tonight, too. At least where I am. Because they tried to pass a law to stop doing it, but... I don't know. I don't know when or if that's actually gonna get implemented. I think it passed in, in either the Senate or the House, but not the other. And then all these sleep experts were like, no, we we can't stay in daylight savings time, we have to stay in standard time. So I think we're going to be changing the clocks at least two more times by the time they iron out all the details and whatever. But some states actually don't. Basically, tomorrow night it's gonna get dark at 4.30. That's gonna suck. Yeah, right, that's what I thought. You know, Mario 64 has a lot of mods. You can get ray tracing in Mario 64. <laughs> Mario 3D All-Stars. That had a good version of Mario 64, in my opinion. Oh. Alright. Ah. That was the whole... The whole point of that was just to get the damn mushroom. Really? That's anti-climactic. Oh, well. I got somewhere in World 3 before I just called it quits. And then I never revisited it. Let's try this level again. <laughs> yeah, so there are bonus levels where you can get extra clouds. Skip over levels.
Slow downs. Ah. Oh, 20 coins is right there. The whole time. Dope. points to continue. Oh yeah, remember the um, episode of The Simpsons where Millhouse is trying to play Waterworld in the arcade? Insert 40 coins to continue. Somebody actually turned that into like a real game. Of course, you don't have to actually have 40 coins. You just... But it, it'll show Millhouse's hand with the coins, so you have to make him actually put... 40 points into it, but then when you continue later on, you don't have to put it in money. Not cheating, I earned the power up legitimately, or rather, Toadstool gave it to me. Oh, cool, one up. That's helpful. Oh, I was really. Oh, okay, I was really close to the end before. Okay. Yeah, and then after that one stage, it reverts to just a regular... Oh, no, no, not not the tiny Goombas. Oh, God. Oh, God damn it. know this already, but you can actually go behind um, 
any of the white squares, not just that level with the whistle. Not that it does anything for you, because you can still get hit by enemies. But I want to say there's only three or four of those um, white rectangles in the entire game. And only one of them actually leads to something useful, I want to say. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the, the tiny piranhas in Sonic 3. Yeah, they're annoying too. I don't like any kind of tiny enemies that stick to you. I to go left instead of right. That's from playing Metroid, right? You go left. Oh, that's a Tanuki suit. Alright. Pretty sure it's a Tanuki suit. Or it's a bunch of one-ups, but either way, I gotta go back and grab it. Oh, alright, I'll take it. Better than that. I fucking lost it already. Oh, god damn it. That's why you don't get the frog suit. Because you just end up losing it anyways. Well, this is where it just was. Alright. So that's where I just was. That block had a stupid frog suit that I instantly lost because of the damn fish. what I think the hardest NES game is. I'd have to think about it.
I didn't like that game. Now, I kid you not, but I once beat um, Double Dragon 2 on the highest difficulty, which you have to do in order to get the full game and the true ending. I mean, I'm going to play that sometime this month, definitely. Double Dragon 3 on NES was a pain in the ass because you had limited continues. Yeah, I think I just didn't like games where you, like, can't fight enemies or something. I'm trying to remember. If it's the game I'm thinking of, it's like you couldn't actually kill enemies. You had to just jump over them or something. Battletoads I only beat because of Rare Replay and using Infinite Lives and Rewind. Um, I beat Bucky O'Hare. Oh, A Boy in His Blob is a fucking pain in the ass. I'm, I don't know how to beat that game. Um, I beat Castlevania 3 once, but I think we used a stage select code. The other day, you, you watched me beat Contra, if you were watching. Um, yeah, Battletoads is just unfair. Yeah, there are games that I wouldn't call unfair, I would just call them... Or I wouldn't call them difficult, I'd call them unfair. Um, Guardian Legend is one of my favorites. Okay, Little Nemo the Dream Master. Okay, hang on, I'm gonna play this real quick. Capcom. Yeah, I know it was a Capcom game. Um... the game I was thinking of, I think, but it's like, oh man, I suck at that game. MC Kids, oh man. Maniac Mansion, that's a tough game, but it has multiple endings depending on who you pick and what strategy you use. Pro Wrestling is a pain in the ass. I don't know if it ever ends either. Shadow of the Ninja is tricky. Um, so I have the whole NES library on my computer, but these are the ones I kept on the console because they're actually good or I like them or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Domino's game. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Alright, so I'm gonna go back to Mario. I beat Bubble Bobble once, and I got the bad ending, so I had to go back and plug in a second controller to get the crystal ball on level 96 to unlock the bonus levels after that. It's crazy. I can beat it with the frog. Probably not. I'll probably get hit. Yeah, the frog suit is so awesome for underwater levels, but it's just so terrible for literally everything else. Yeah. World 6, you can get the Hammer Bros. And that can kill ghosts and shit. Like, kind of a crazy good power up. Actually, the most fun you can have in a video game, I think, is if you play Mario 3 with Game Genie. And just give yourself the Hammer Bros. suit right from the beginning. And make yourself invincible so you never lose it. Oh, it's Wendy. Bowser only had one daughter, and of course they made her ugly as hell. Wendy. See, if I hadn't beaten all these levels already, I would have had to beat them to get to where the ship is. Yeah. So I know some people say it is possible to jump over the flagpole in Mario 1 without Game Genie, but I use Game Genie to, you know, to lower gravity or give me a double jump or whatever, and yeah, if you jump over that flagpole, there's nothing after it. It just goes on forever until you run out of time. No way I was going to get that all the way over here. I'm not Yeah. At the risk of being controversial, I'm going to say that Chris Pratt sounds fine. I'm really excited about this new Mario movie. I think, what's his name, Jack Black, I think he's going to do good as Bowser. But see, if people complain about this new Mario movie, then we're going to have to wait another 30 years to get another one. Because that's what happened the last time. They did that horrible live-action movie, and it was so bad that they just stopped making movies. So, I think people need to just be happy that they're finally making another Mario movie. Yeah. Alright, so now we're in giant land. God damn it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I do remember that Mario Bros. movie did have a troubled development. Isn't it 
make any sense either. Oh, they're the Mario Brothers, so their last name is Mario. If no, that's just... Why would you do that? Mario Mario. No, that's... Oh yeah, giant turtles, giant Goombas, regular size crawl plants. Yeah. for skipping levels, but I'm not going to be skipping any levels. It was something where it's like I watched it like once, and it was like, I mean in, in like the 2000s I think I watched it. Or maybe, you know what, I think it was on TV when I was a kid once, and it was like, what the hell is this? You know what, though? The Street Fighter movie from the 90s was amazing. Alright, that was a great movie. And I thought the Double Dragon movie was pretty good, too. So. Yeah, the guy who played M. Bison was dying of cancer when he filmed that movie. He did it for his son, because his son just loved the series, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah video game-based movies in general just haven't been very good. When they announced Jim Carrey as Robotnik, I'm like, he's too skinny. I don't get it. But then I watched the movie, and I'm like, oh, you know what? Good job. And then Sonic 2, they announced, you know, Idris Elba as Knuckles. It was like, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I think Jim Carrey actually did better in the second Sonic movie than in the first one. I mean, good in both, but I really thought he fit the character better in the second one. continue in this game, it's not gonna send me all the way back to the start, I don't think. No, it sends you to the start of the world you're on, and you have to replay levels unless you got one of the shortcuts. Yeah, oh, these little, uh, fire guys, yeah. They're nuts. Yeah, 
You know, it might still be on my YouTube channel. There was a, a clip of me. I think it was in one of the late game um, castles. I, there's a clip of me glitching through the wall on a conveyor belt. If, you have an, if you're on a conveyor belt and you do it just right, you're walk, you can glitch through a wall in a certain spot to get to the boss. like the ghosts. Yeah, in my last stream, I was just mentioning that I never got that Mario 1 glitch to work for the Infinite Lives or whatever. You gotta jump on the shell just right, and I was never able to do it. Really? Got two mushrooms, but they wouldn't give it to me. Alright. Streaming Mario 2, I kept dying and getting game over on that level with the whales and the water because I kept trying to get the next war. I kept dying. And of course, in Dr. Mario, which does count as a Mario game, I beat level 20, but then couldn't beat level 21, and then there's no. You can't skip ahead at that point. You have to beat level 20 every time you want to try the ones after that. Oh yeah, US Mario 2, yeah. Oh, Lost Levels? I never beat Lost Levels. That game sucks. I hate that game. Lost Levels introduced the poison mushrooms, and it's like, that's kind of a dick move. Like, why would you do that? Oh, nice. Can I call it P-Wing? That's what I call it. Oh yeah, I remember this level. The door. 
Oh yeah, it switches between big and little when you go through a door. Right, I knew that. It was determined that the original Mario 2 would be too difficult for American audiences, I think. And that's why they just modified Doki Doki Panic. Yeah, and I wasn't planning on streaming Super Mario World this month because I streamed that a while back through the Switch Online service and all that. I used to do a segment called Switch Saturday. There were a lot of games I played during that. Touches animation. I'll, I'll check that out. There's a video where it's a whole series of them, but Mario and Sonic switched games, and then like, yeah, and then they, I think they just get totally annihilated by the other villain or something. Thank you. 
This is one, because the other one is under back down. No! Mario so you can kill this piranha plant, I think. Okay. Okay. Not sure if I've ever been in that room before. Oh. Oh, I wish I was uh a clown. So if I wanted to, I could just keep dying on purpose and just keep farming lives right there. I'm not gonna do that though. Alright, here we go. You again. Learn some new tactics, buddy. Alright, so. Oh, I did have to beat it to get the bridge. Oh, okay. I'm sure I've beaten it before then. Oh, he's a dinosaur. The king has been transformed into an ugly ass T Rex. Yeah, Bowser practices black magic, yo. He's a. He's actually an evil wizard. I kid you not. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, I got a text. Whoops. Hang on. Oh, I got a text about half an hour ago. In the QR code, it will um, bring you to Nintendo's website where you can view all of the manuals for all the games that are built in. Although it would have been better if they just put them on the console, but I guess they would take that space. You know? So. You can actually print them out if you want. So, I'm looking at these Super Mario Bros. Yeah, what is the story? Of Yes, okay. Bowser, King of the Koopa. The Sorcerer King holding Princess Toadstool, Toadstool captive in the last castle. He comes at you spitting fire. There are several ways to kill him, but you only get points if you use fireballs. He's a Sorcerer King. Um, yeah, I want to say there was more to it than that. Okay, ready? Ready for this? Here, I'm just gonna... Yeah, so... Oh, you probably can't even see it. Okay. Oh, well. Well, one day the kingdom of the peaceful mushroom people was invaded by the Koopa, a tribe of turtles famous for their black magic. The quiet, peace-loving mushroom people were turned into mere stones, bricks, and even field horsehair plants and the Mushroom Kingdom fell into ruin. So every time you break a brick, you're killing a mushroom person. 
The only one who can undo the magic spell on the Mushroom people and return them to their normal selves is the Princess Toadstool, the daughter of the Mushroom King. Unfortunately, she is presently in the hands of the great Koopa Turtle King. Yep. So, Bowser is a sorcerer who uses black magic and only Peach can stop him and that's why he kidnapped her. There you have it. Mario 3, Bowser is back. Ha ha ha, these are my seven children that are going to help me take over the mushroom world. Of course, the best one is Ludwig von Koopa, everybody knows that. So the Mushroom Kingdom leads to the Mushroom World, and Bowser sent his children there to take over the world. They stole the royal magic wands. Yep, that's the story. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. That would be cool. I'll get back to it. I can definitely stream longer if it's a game that I like and I don't get hungry. <laughs> That's always what happens every time I stream. It's like after like about two hours or so, it's like I get hungry, I get bored, or I get tired. I wanted to see if that would stop it from coming out and it didn't. Okay. Stupid. I'm just going to stand on this burner. Sure. Oh. All the way over there, eh? I don't know what the new movie is doing because Bowser is trying to take over this like penguin kingdom and I don't remember that from any of the games although I admit I didn't play all of them but I played most of them and I don't remember there being no penguins except in Mario 64. But supposedly there's a penguin somewhere in most Nintendo or most Mario games. Like Super Mario 64 had a penguin in the middle of an island that you couldn't reach, but he was there because Nintendo just loves to put penguins in there. Which is fine, who doesn't like penguins? levels with one of the suits in back. Horrible. Oh well. Okay. 
Red Phoenix Fox. Okay. Hey, look at the head looks like a hamburger, sort of. No, I swear one of the kings, I might have gotten him already, but one of the kings, his he just looks like a hamburger. So we're in World 5. World 5 is my favorite. And this is where you get most of the Tanuki suits. Um, so, one time I was playing through the game, and just for fun, I used a whistle to go back to World 5 so I could play through it again and farm some more Tanuki suits. I'm not going to do that today, though. I'm just, uh, making good time so far, I think. So I, don't know, I don't know if I should focus more on speedrunning or completionism. It just depends on the game, I guess. There aren't too many games I can speedrun right now, though. I'm, I'm totally out of practice in the ones that I used to do. I know it doesn't matter which way you go, but I still want to go up there. Oh, well. Yeah, this level is a little weird. Oh yeah, th those guys. I remember now, they can grab the blue blocks just like you can. Ah! What a dick. Ah! I win. I win. I win. Ha ha ha. You bastards. Yeah, I, I don't play fighting games that much right now. Well, we used to play Street Fighter V and during Sunday Night Shenanigans, but we haven't played that in a while. Although, all three of us are pretty excited about Street Fighter VI. I played Guilty Gear Strive when it was new. I played Cross Tag Battle. Um, yeah. Oh, there it is. I like the ROM hack that basically turns the early Sonic games into heroes. You know, you, you have all three people you can switch between in the original Sonic levels. I always thought that was neat. Oops. Oh yeah, this level's good. Not a Harry Potter fan. I'm just not. Just never got into it. And that Hogwarts uh, Collector's Edition. What are the 250, 300 bucks? That's ridiculous. For a uh, what a floating fake wand or something. Of course, then I saw the uh, Resident Evil 4 remake Collector's Edition. 250 bucks comes with the statue of Leon. So it's like, no, I can't afford that shit anymore, and I got nowhere to put it. I actually gotta start selling shit. Too much video game swag around here. Damn you, Goomba. You will give me your boot. Yes, it will be mine. Ah ha ha. I get the boot. Mine. Yeah, I think that you will. That's good, you can't bite me when I got a shoe on. What's he gonna do? Go in there with his shoe and poke me in the ass?
No! Barefoot again. Nobody wants to be barefoot. excited about the new Pokemon, of course. And hey, that fits my theme for the month, so I'll probably be able to play that. I'll probably get Scarlet. I've been told to play Bayonetta 3, but I didn't really play the first one. And then I streamed the quarry once and I was playing that a little more and it it's an okay game. It's not great. I went with the console version because the PC version was stuttering and had weird frame rate issues. But now console version is capped at 30, and it's like, oh well that's not an improvement at all. I would have preferred an inconsistent 60 in that case. God damn it. it got me. I was gonna go back and hit those other blocks. Oh well. on my radar at this point. Um, I was excited about Scorn for a long time, and I streamed that last month, and I, I hated it. It sucked. Yeah, and then Resident Evil 4 Remake I just mentioned, and then, uh, I don't play Call of Duty anymore. I played the uh, open beta for Modern Warfare 2, and I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It's Call of Duty. It's what I expected it to be, but it wasn't great. Why am I not able to get that mushroom and then go back? Who knows? Maybe I should just start the level with the mushroom. Might be a good idea. Yeah, I have both of the Nino Pony games. Well, actually, I had the first one on Steelbook on PS3, and then I sold it along with the console. But I have the second one on PS4. Those are good games, from what I played. Yeah, and I'm glad that Disgaea 7 is in development, but I didn't like 6 that much. I mean, 3, 4, and 5 are just amazing games. Disgaea, I don't know. Disgaea. I probably don't even say it right, who knows? Disgaea. Yeah, the first two games that actually required a Series S or X were the Medium and the Ascent, I think. Both were pretty good games. Yeah, I would have played the Medium during Hollow Stream last month, but um, I don't own it. I beat it when it was on Game Pass, and then I didn't really find it. It's a pretty good game.
Yeah. I got Cyberpunk when it came out, and I played it on the Series S. So even though it was 1440p or 1080p 30fps, it didn't crash. It was actually the most stable version on Series S. Um, but then I revisited it on Series X when I got that, and it was like, oh yeah, this is definitely better. Um, Elden Ring I have on Series X, and yeah, I, I wouldn't want to try to play that on a regular Xbox One. No freaking way. Although, believe it or not, Elden Ring runs surprisingly well on the Steam Deck. I've seen it. Blocks there intentionally so you can't fly. Hold on, let me see if there's anything up there. No, see, it doesn't even, screen doesn't even go up, so I don't think you can fly. Okay. Oh, I didn't get a Steam Deck, my friend did. Now, my friend has one and he brought it over, and I'm like, okay, this. Suffers huge. This is gonna make my arms cramp up. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Now that you can actually get one, there's no delay. It's like I don't know. I feel like I want to wait for like a second gen model, see if it gets better specs or lower price tag or something. But I hear it's very good for emulation because you can run RetroArch right through Steam now. But some people have been able to get a Switch emulator to run on the Steam Deck. I'm sure Nintendo's livid. <laughs> Although the best way to play Switch is on an actual Switch. You know, if you already have a Switch, you might as well just play on there. No, I really wanted a Steam Deck when they first announced it because it was new and... But then, it, you know, as I did more research on it, I'm like, oh, this thing's actually... Like, I think $400 is reasonably priced for what it is, but you gotta pay over $500 to get the model with the, um... You know, the SSD and more space and all that. Yeah, I have the Switch o OLED, um, and then I sold the original model. What I should have done, after I bought the OLED model, I should have kept the original and modded it, but oh well. Because it was the original from launch. Oh my god, remember the Ouya? Oh, that thing sucked. I did not buy one, but for some reason I really thought that thing was going to succeed. I thought it was a neat concept. But the only, like, really exceptional exclusive, I think, was Powerfall, right? And then that got ported anyway. Sony announced uh, the VR2 headset, February, I think. $550. Like, what are you thinking? And they're going to up the price on the PS5, too. And it's like, 
two years in, they're raising prices. It's like, I, okay, I get that we still have some supply chain issues, fuel costs, inflation, yada yada, but it's like, you're supposed to lower the price over time so that more people can afford it, and then you end up selling more games and accessories and whatnot. If you make it harder to get, you're just ensuring that only the eBay people are going to be able to get it. Yeah, and then Meta, <laughs> the Metaverse is a fucking ghost town, and they're upping the price on the headset, and releasing an even more expensive one on top of it. Like, why? All that effort just to get a coin, really? Oh, well. <laughs> oh. Meta is the new MySpace. I never had a MySpace. I knew a lot of people who did. I mean, I was just telling somebody the other day how, like, when Facebook was new, I was in college, and it's like you had to be a college student. You had to have a college email address. And it was just, it was ex the exclusivity is what made it good. And there were no ads. You could friend anybody, like somebody in your class, somebody in your dorm. And everybody was on it, and it was awesome. And then as, as they let more people on it, and they started doing ads, it just got worse. Unfortunately, the star doesn't protect it from lava. Oh, Second Life. I briefly played Second Life. Yeah. I played that, oh, a long time ago. Oh yeah, this is where they fuck with you. They bring in the ones from the ceiling. Oh god, this fucking level. Um, yeah, use them or lose them, right? My inventory is full, so it's gonna keep booting the last one to make room for the new one. Stupid turtle. Oh, come on. Give me. Yeah, see? The star can kill the undead and the fireballs. Oh, crap, it wore off. Ah. <laughs> oh, shit, this level hard. Remember how in the original Sonic, if you fell on spikes, it was just automatic death? Yeah, I'm glad they fixed that in the newer versions of it, actually. Like, if you fall on the spikes, first you lose all your rings, and then you die. There was no invincibility period between spike caps or something. flagged you when you wrote die, and I had to add it. do anything wrong. I didn't know it did that. But apparently now if you write the word die, it won't try to block it. Yeah, I didn't know that it blocked words. I've never seen that before. I'm, I'm still relatively new to Switch, I guess. Or, uh, Twitch. Twitch, Switch. 
Oh. Oh, I was supposed to jump off of him, or am I supposed to do this? Okay. Ah, I got you, Lekitu. You suck. Yeah. Oh, I finally fucking did it! <laughs> it only took till World 5. Finally got 5 up. Good. And I still haven't used any continues, which is good. Okay, flower, 1 up. 20 coins. Flower. Okay. I'm good at memory games when it's like... When I'm doing it all in one go. But, you know, if there's a gap in between, then I can't remember which stuff is. Oh, this level is... Wacky. I don't like auto-scroller levels in, like, any game, really. To be honest. I don't think anyone does. Like, literally no one likes auto-scroller. <laughs> Any fire, I should be fine, knock on wood. That's funny, it doesn't seem like he spawned in this time. Or I didn't get far enough yet. Oh, there he is. Okay. like this, you probably saw the, um, King of the Hill intro recut in the style of Neon Genesis Evangelion. I sell existential, I, I sell pain and existential pain. <laughs> Accessories. <laughs> Suit just because why not? Oh, yeah, this one's a. What kind of bird is that? Vulture, buzzard, something like that. Oh, it's 10 30 already. Alright, I gotta stop soon. Well, I got plans tomorrow, and I'm probably gonna be tired after, and then I'm supposed to uh, do another show. I'm, I'm on my friend's show tomorrow night, so. Anyone's awake around midnight tomorrow night, Eastern Standard Time, check out Ask Wheels on Twitch. We do, uh, we call it Sunday Night Shenanigans, so I'll probably be doing that tomorrow night around midnight. And then Monday I might not stream because I might be too tired from staying up late Sunday night. Yeah, so that's the thing. I'm trying to stream maybe four days a week, but... 
it's just, you know, Sundays are tough because that's usually when I make plans and I already end up on my friend's channel that night. And then Mondays are tough because I'm usually tired. But, but uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday seem to work. I'll send me the channel. Yeah, um, let me see if I can get that. Um, Oh, is it going to let me do this? Oh, you still have your husky. Yeah, Ori o Osiris. Right? Or is it Orion? I can't remember. Sorry. Yeah, so that's... There's the link to uh, that channel. I'm a big fan of Quiche and Sherpa, actually, on YouTube. Oh, this is the fatty who shakes the whole arena. Um, oh, sorry, that's what I thought, I'm sorry. Yeah, he posted something about him the other day. I had been wondering if he was still around. And yeah, you, you did a video of him blowing bubbles in his water once, that was cool. I don't know, dogs knew how to do that. Oh, he look, oh man, he looks like Father Time. Look at him. Okay. Six dash one. No! Stupid mushroom. Oh, this... Wow, that background is giving me a headache. That's never happened before. Holy shit. That is eye-wrenching. Yeah, see, if I tried to play this on a CRT monitor, at, like the, uh, the TV at the original resolution, I would just get a splitting headache and I'd get nauseous. Like, that's why I ended up selling my N64 years ago, because every time I tried to play it, I almost threw up. With these mini consoles, man, just, I, I just think it's better. Just a sharper image, that's all. What's interesting is I got the Neo Geo Arcade Stick Pro console. It's the joystick that has the games built in. You can just plug it right into the TV. Um, what I noticed is a lot of those games actually run better when you enable the scan lines. I don't know why. Or, or maybe it's an optical illusion or something. I suppose I could have done Neo Geo November. <laughs> but that would have just been Metal Slug and King of Fighters the whole month. Because <laughs> I, I don't know. Neo Geo has plenty of great games, but only those two series really got my attention. Boy, just what I wanted another auto scroll. With. Crazy lines. Yeah, World 6 can be a pain in the ass because of all the damn ice, but it's also the only part of the game where you can get the hammer suit. 
I forget what it's called. It's either Sledgehammer Mario or it's Hammer Bros Mario or something. Can't remember. Okay. Oh yeah, this is I right here. Right. It breaks the illusion of 60. Yeah, that's probably why they did the scan lines to begin with, was to make it seem like the frame rate was higher. Now, I know you're going to hate me for saying this, but I'm really glad the Genesis mini console allows 16x9, because I don't like 4x3. Alright, good. Um, yeah, so I mean, on this, I mean, Pixel Perfect makes things smaller, and I don't like it. Let's turn on the filter real quick and see what that does. Oh yeah, I'm going to lock that to make sure I don't... Oh yeah, look, oh god! Oh man, oh it's hurting my eyes already. Holy shit, look at that. <laughs> oh yeah, but you know what? It is better for them, uh, for the background. Yeah, the background doesn't seem to be flickering, it's not as jaggy. I don't know. It is helping. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> the CRT filter makes me nauseous and gives me a headache, but it's not as bad as those damn background lines without the CRT. power up in one of these blocks, but I forget which level. Oh, another hammer. Okay. It's hammer time. So I said I was going to do every level, but I may have missed a mushroom house because I didn't have a hammer to break the rock next to it. That was in world 4, but then again it might have just been decorative. No. I don't have any music playing. Although it, the webcam could be picking up the music from the game and echoing it or something. Oh, I'm wearing all that stuff, I'm sure, yeah. But I don't, yeah, I don't play any music in the background. Oh, yeah. that looks interesting. Ah, it looks like I can go up there. Yeah, oh, how do I do that? I can't remember shit, it was so long ago. Right. I'm gonna have to stop, because I gotta go to bed soon. Probably pick it up again on Tuesday, I'm thinking. I mean, it's one of my favorite games, and I'd like to actually like, do a full playthrough with no skipping. So, I am going to do Zelda 2 at some point, even though my buddy Ask Wheels hates that game. 
I'm gonna try and get him to do commentary for that episode. Or, um, maybe I can somehow trick him. But now that I said that, he might find out. Oh, jeez. Oh yeah, it's not actually good. Turok. Turok 2 might be fun to do. I have the Steam version. Alright, so... Now I gotta just figure out how to save the... How do you save the chat? My friend Visual Knight have been chatting this whole time, and um, I hope all this stuff shows up when I send it over to YouTube. I'm gonna have to research well, that. But anyways, I am done for today. So anybody watching, thanks for watching. Thanks, Visual Knight, of course, good friend. Um, so let's plan for Tuesday, probably around seven or eight o'clock. All right, see ya. Yeah. <sighs>